Among the events this weekend to honor Martin Luther King Jr. is a musical tribute based on the words of Boston's first poet laureate, Sam Cornish. The performance by Opera on Met takes place Sunday, 3 p.m. at First Church in Roxbury. To tell us about the production are the ensemble's founder, Marshall Hughes, also joining us, one of the event's performers. Cliff Blake, thank you both very much for being with us. Thank you for having us. I want to start with, with Marshall. Um, uh, for people who don't know Sam Cornish, haven't seen his poetry, um, tell us about him. Well, Sam Cornish was the first playwright uh, laureate here in Boston. He was hired by Mayor Menino, uh, selected by Mayor Menino. And he also happened to be an African American. And uh, so he was therefore the first African American playwright laureate in Boston. Uh, he's actually originally from Baltimore and has been a poet and um, a teacher um, for as long as I've known him and twice as long as that. Um, lives in Arlington, grew up in Arlington. Uh, I mean, lived in, with his wife in Arlington and um, we hit it off very well. He came to read for us once for a play we were doing and we got together. I read his April Full of Beans, loved it and we decided to work together on a Cornish project. Now, lots of poets have their words set to music, but what is it about the connection to music that Sam himself must have been very aware of in his poetry? The wonderful thing about Sam is that he had, he was a, a total musician. He loved jazz, he loved opera, he loved classical, and all of his music was uh, lyrical that way. He, he could sit in front of an Irish band, which we're doing, and recite his poetry, and it would fit just as well as, his, as if he was sitting in front of a jazz band, and it was, it was brilliant. Cliff, what about your connection to Sam? Oh, well, I think uh, one of the things that, that he really did for me is, is open up my eyes to, uh, to the power of, of words and how they can really um, change your life. And I think um, probably one of the most meaningful things in my life, I saw him before, before he died, the week before he died, and um, he couldn't speak. And I was talking gibberish and um, just telling him what I was up to and all that. And, um, at one point I realized I was talking gibberish and the silence, which a lot of his poems have, are Spartan in words, the silence started to speak and I said, there's a poem in the air and um, a tear came in his left eye and a tear was in right and I said that, a tear is in my left and one in your right. And um, I wrote a poem after that but I, I sort of viewed the poem was written by him in silence, without words. So, uh, you know, I've, I, he's had a profound impact on me as a writer. And, um, but clearly as a performer, I learned a lot about the black experience working with Marshall. Um, there was a poem, James Baldwin, where uh, we had to try to figure out what that meant. And um, there was a black actor who, who says, I don't get this poem. And then <laughs> at one point, the white actors were explaining it to him. <laughs> So it's, a ni it's been a nice way to sort of not be aware of your skin color. Um, it doesn't matter, really. And the words are deeper than, than um, the color of your skin. Um, their words are for everybody, and they're, they're universal. And he was a, a master of sharing that. Cliff, what you described when you were talking uh, with, with Sam when he was in the hospital, that is a life-changing moment. Uh, what's going on when... when, when I guess the feelings change the way you described. Uh, well, I, I, yeah, I think it's a hard it's a hard time to go see somebody when they're dying. Um, there are only a handful of people I've seen actually die, which is an experience. Uh, but then when you go to see somebody and you kind of know it, it's the last time you're seeing them, um, it, it's it's very um, it's 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 very important to to have a meaningful <laughs> exchange. And then when you find out that they can't talk with words. Um, what do you do? And um, somehow we, we talked without words. And then it brought to light all the words that he had shared over the years. And um, I went home and reflected, and, and that's when I, I sort of wrote a, a poem uh, based on our, our, well, we kind of wrote it together, I think, in silence. And uh, it, that feeling came out. But I, th I think any time anyone approaches death, um, it's important to embrace it because it's very easy to say, oh, I don't want to go see somebody before they die. It's too scary. But it's, it's, um, it actually touched me as one of the more um, deeper moments of my life. Um, 
when, when you approach somebody. Even, and I didn't know him well. I wasn't a, a close relative or friend. He was somebody I, I knew from uh, the, the, the world of theater was all. Marshall, uh, you trusted your, your feelings in putting this production together because you asked the participants to uh, pick their favorite poem by Sam. Yeah. What was that like? It was pretty amazing because um, you, you, the, the cast itself is interracial. You know, we're, we're a mixed cast. Um, and it was fun to see what people would come back with. And Holly, Holly who is a uh, very Anglo-Saxon, wonderful woman, picked um, Fannie Lou Hamer a very short poem by Fan, uh, about Fannie Lou Hamer by him and um, became Fannie Lou Hamer. Um, so it was, it was, a, a exciting, it was a, an exciting uh, time and people were just, um, it opened them up to a whole, a whole possibility, a whole realm of um, viewing people from another lens. But if you have a favorite poem, very handy, yeah. By Sam, uh, could you mind sharing a little of that? Please? Sure. Well, this, yeah, this is one that, that he wrote. It's very Spartan in words. It's called We Have Never Loved. We have never loved each other. We have only this house, this street, these neighborhoods to misunderstand ourselves. This food, these wages, it is not love, but something deeper than fear that makes you call me brother in a strange city of white men. Thank you. Uh, Marshall, it makes me think of maybe what you're trying to do with this event on Sunday. Well, it's a, uh, we like to, there are lots of people who are gone who are uh, really activists in social justice and, and, and getting the right words out. And Sam is one of those people. Uh, and so we're dedicating a lot of the program to several, to, to three people, Joanne Lowry, Sam Cornish, and Howard Reznikoff, who was a, um, an educator and social activist. Um, and we're doing it by doing a lot of his poems. We're doing lots of excerpts from Abram Full of Beans, which is the Cornish project, the first part of the Cornish project. And right before Sam died, we were going to work on the second part of the project and we're going to continue to write on that. So we're going to do some poems from some of his other works uh, that's going to be uh, accompanied by an Irish band, one of Sam's, Sam's favorite bands to play with. Uh, alongside we're going to do a bunch of eclectic things. We're going to do um, one of Cliff Blake's poems uh, by a youngster uh, that's going to be backed up by a Marvin Gaye song, for instance. Uh, we have the traditional sort of spirituals. We have those happening, and we also have some, some king singers. We, they're, they're wonderful arrangements of things. So it's very eclectic, um, but it's also very thought-provoking. Uh, you leave away full. You, you leave away, you're contemplating. Um, well, we should make sure people know a little of the details. It's going to be Sunday at 3 o'clock? Sunday at 3 o'clock at First Church Roxbury. Um, and uh, we do it Monday in Lexington at First Church at Uni Unitarian Universalist. But uh, come out to either one. So at 3 o'clock, First Church Roxbury. Thank you both very much, Marshall Hughes and Cliff Blake.